So the idea is that you just simply don't allow the left arm, either upper or lower segment, to really move anywhere, but instead okay. leave it to the roll of the wrist only to cause the club head to rotate around this wrist point. And okay. first you could try 90 and just throw it like you're, like you're fishing. Yep. Okay. Yep. So let it drop and then see if you can get it to pop pretty good. Okay, so you're starting to get it there. You're getting some you outward like a C, C plus there. You're getting some outward <laughs> force going. Yeah, pretty good, good brisk pop. Really. Okay, so throw it up the camera more instead of down. Okay, good. Okay, I gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm almost feeling like I'm going more like kind of. I feel like I'm going kind of up and back. I would agree. That's the first. That's probably the first direction that the throw would start in, and yeah. then as, as it goes around, it feels like it ends up more. Yeah, you're getting yeah. it now. So it, it's almost like yeah. Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about more speed, more distance with less effort. But before we dive in, two quick things. Number one, uh, we have launched our golf school dates for 2020, and they are already filling up. The first two are already full. If you would love to come hang out for two days in Bethlehem, PA, come to a golf school, I would love to have you. We'll put a link in the description down below. If you can't make it to a golf school, I would still love to work with you and help take your game to the next level. And we can do that through Kagorno Golf. That's where I'm at every day, interacting with members in our community. And I would love for you to be part of our team. Team. You can send in your swing video, join our community, get access to everything we have, including all of our master classes, everything in the member library, the practice library, and everything else on the site. We'll put a link for coronagolf.com in the uh, description down below. Now, we are here uh, with uh, Steve Pratt Golf on YouTube. You may have seen some of his videos before. We love him, and we're very happy to have him here today. We're at the lakes at El Segundo, just outside of LA. We're going to bring Steve in in a minute and uh, talk about some driver distance. All right, Mr. Steve, thanks for coming out today. I want to get wherever your hand there for you. Thank you very much. Hey, well, thanks for having me. I'm really uh, grateful to be part of your big barnstorming tour yeah, you've been doing. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely happy to have you here. So obviously, I've been uh, watching your videos, yeah. a lot of driver videos, a lot of speed, sure. a lot of distance that I love and we love. Sure. And so one of the videos that we saw on there um, was in terms of the throw out yeah. from the top. Yeah. And we had talked a little bit about it, and I love it. There's some really cool visuals that I think everyone um, will sure. really like. And so I'm gonna hop over here and then maybe if you can give us a little intro into what is this throw out? Um, how does someone feel it or train it? And then we'll kind of hit some shots. Okay, cool. very cool. So I've got this little uh, speed whoosh gadget that I really like for this. Yeah. And let me show you, I'll set that down. Let me show you um, like the, the one and then the other, like yep. the way that I would rather see someone do it and then the way that maybe some folks at home are thinking that was more the way they should be doing it, but sure. I think is more problematic and maybe causing them more trouble yeah um, so let's blow everybody my everybody's mind yeah, first yeah. so if I'm I'm going back here and, I, and I'll turn and I'll do it after from the face on sure. after this okay so let's say we're back here close to the top of the swing and 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 what I'm looking for is an out throw so I'm looking right away from the top of the swing just about to um, to throw the force down the shaft and out into space so around me so out out away from me, yeah. so out away from like a, a central point uh, on my chest or what have you. So the wrist action that I would advocate people use if they want to get this easier distance would be about 180 degree range of motion. So call this, let's say we're at 90 degrees cocked here. Sure. Okay. So if I were to throw out, I'm going to hold this arm here so that I can't do the one thing that I don't, you know, I'll show you next. Yep. And I do this and if I can get the ball to pop at the end, if I can get it to, to go down and hear that popping uh, sound, that's cool. a good loud popping sound. Now that would just be half of the release that you might show somebody, could because, see if I just do this and, I've, and then I turn through, I'm still gonna have an open club face at sure, that point. Yeah, yeah. So just that doing it going from 90 to zero and getting this motion with the wrist going, almost like you're kind of backhanding a fishing pole right at the camera here. And Steve, I wanna pause yeah. you there for a sec. So this, this throw out motion, mm -hmm. right? That's what we're talking about in terms of the feel at the top. Yeah. The idea is to create more speed, yeah. right? Ultimately to get the ball to go farther yeah. without physically having to feel like you're forcing more speed into I it. I think you're gonna get added distance out of this disproportionately because of the other added benefits Got him. besides possibly a few more miles an hour I think there's some added benefits to just being becoming more distance efficient Got it, okay. that I think you're going to get, that distance I think you're going to really like. Um, so going back 
to this, I, I'm going to do 180 degrees, which would more look like this. Got and it, see, okay. that's also going to get the forearm rotating into the ball and squaring the face up, as well as continuing to accelerate the club head past impact. Got so it. I'm not going to just throw it and then quit. Yeah, yeah. Because that's not going to take me through. Now, keep in mind, everybody is probably watching this going, oh, what? I'm turning it off, right? <laughs> so just keep in mind that we have to blend this with the pivot yeah. or a weight shift and a turn. Otherwise, the, the release point ends up being ridiculously early. But so we're just isolating this wrist and forearm action. Absolutely. Just to show you. So uh, let, let me show it one more time from sure. this angle. Yeah. So we're going to here and without hitting anything behind me, I'm doing... That's the initial move, and I'm gonna to try to get that thing to pop. Yep. And I wanna become an expert. You know, if you had something like this, a tool like this, I'm trying to become an expert at making it pop loud. So show me, let's, let's face back this way for a sec, Steve. Let's show me from here what would be the bad, like what do we not wanna do with that? What do people okay. think we wanna do and we don't so want So what a lot of people will do, because we know a lot of our students have a hard time doing a lot of this. Yes. And so what people will do sometimes unconsciously or maybe by design because someone told them to do it yep. is see I was holding my arm in the first example what they would tend to do is they would try to either pull the handle down at the ball uh -huh. or if they do turn through it they'll be trying to maintain intentionally maintain this angle right and so that would blow this out of the water because now either way yeah. you're not going to get any pop so I don't have any outward seeking force out to the ball. Got it. Yeah, and, and so when you do that, um, I, and that's, what, that's such a nice visual because you actually can literally see it as you're doing it right yeah. versus wrong. Yeah. So, and I said the speed part, but you're right. There's really, there's really maybe three or four different potential benefits. Yeah. If we were to kind of like write up on a wall, hey, yeah. here are the two or three or four things mm -hmm. that this throw out motion mm -hmm. um, would lead to that would make someone hit it farther. What would be mm -hmm. those three, two, three, four things? So let's say we'll compare, let, let's take the first one, which would be uh, a difference in angle of attack. Yeah. So we're hearing a lot, you know, lately that we w we'd like to hit up on the driver more. Certainly somebody that would do it the second way, which I believe was the less efficient way of doing it, yeah. you would either try to pull the handle towards the ball or you would shift and turn, but you'd purposely try to hold lag. I think you're kind of, kind of a cinch to hit down on the ball at that point. Absolutely. And let's, say, let's just say we're just going to take the average golfer at 90 miles an hour, which is what we think the uh, people are about average. Yep. I think we're finding the difference between like a, a minus five or a downwards five and an upwards five, something around 25 yards at that point. And so, and I want to pause there for a second. So mm -hmm. for those that might not have put two and two together, because mm -hmm. we know what the, all that means, if you were to hit up on the ball, if I give you a driver, let me flip where you got that back there. And let me grab that, that out of your hands there. And we were to kind of demonstrate what an upward versus mm -hmm. a down angle of attack in real sure. slow motion, just the club head. If we were to have the ball, the club come down in the ball, let's even exaggerate one mm -hmm. more kind of from real high. Oh, yeah, and yeah, low. yeah. Yeah. So we're doing high to low. Yeah. yeah. Let's say the downward angle of attack, given, mm -hmm. a, given a relative speed mm -hmm. versus an upward attack. Let's just over exaggerate yep. and say that the club head's coming lower this way. Five down mm -hmm. to five up. Mm -hmm. given like a 90 mile an hour ish compass speed, hour, right. would be how much of a, di a distance? It's a 25 yard pickup. It's That's not, huge. it's not direct. A lot of it can be direct because as we know, a lot of our golfers and a lot of our students just simply don't launch the ball high enough with their drivers. Exactly. Through, for one reason or another, yep. they just don't. So you're going to get some added, added benefit out of that by just getting more carry distance, which you probably need. Love it. Eventually, you'll pick up the 25 yards. You'll, you'll have to you change angle of attack. You're going to have to maybe do a little driver change on a uh, setting. Sure. You know, maybe, maybe crank it down in loft to make up for. And yep. really where you're gaining the rest of the distance is, now you're bringing the spin down. Yeah, and exactly. so now we start getting into that high launch, low spin combination that really gets it out there, which the average guy can should really pay attention to. Because what is going to be easier for them is going to be picking up yardage this way rather than maybe training and training and gym time and gym time trying to go from 90 to 100. Yep. Well, you can effectively go from 90 to 100 simply by following a few things that will make you more efficient instead. It's, yeah. it's, it's as if you jump from 90 to 100. Or at minimum, if you're gonna do the speed pieces, yeah. do this as well. Oh yeah, so you get both, best right? of both worlds, yeah. And so with doing the throw out motion, mm -hmm. right, we have an angle attack that's gonna be more up. We've yes. got probably more dynamic loft, yes. which so they need with the speed. Yes, so we're gonna get a higher launch. Yep, and lower and spin. This, this 
completing this release motion and then that, that in combination so you get a square, more squared up club phase as opposed to one where you might be hitting down and across and hitting low spinny climbing slices, yep. which is the typical pattern. Um, you'll get lower spin and then you're going to drop that loft down a little bit too eventually and you'll even drop the spin even lower than that. High launch, low spin, spin. good speed. We like yeah, all maybe those. even more ball speed out of this too than yeah. compared to the, what people might be used to. Love that. So guys, love that explanation. I have an idea of what we're going to talk about. I'm going to hop in here with Steve, going to show me how the feels, and I'll hit some shots with it. We'll kind of transfer those feels to that. Yeah, awesome. All right, Steve, so let's give this a shot here. Sure. Haven't done this before. I'm looking forward to feeling it. I've yeah. seen you do this enough where I'm like, I'm going to start kind of messing around with this. So okay. if I were to start this, yeah. so I wanted to practice at home. Yeah. Um, just initial baseline kindergarten level. Yeah. I'm going up to the top of the backswing. Yeah, roughly three quarters would be okay too. Okay. Yeah. And then now I get the ball at the bottom of the, yes, the that's thing right. here. That's right. And so am I just kind of ho holding my... You, yeah, you try to get the hand, like, like your glove hand maybe a little higher to shoulder level. Yep. That's kind of where we feel like the, the wrists are starting to be uncocked. Yep. And you'd keep your, uh, at the elbow pretty, you know, pretty straight like that. And you, okay. Yeah, you hold it right at the elbow for you would be good. Yep. And then from there, so the idea is that you just simply don't allow the left arm, either upper or lower segment, to really move anywhere. But instead, okay. leave it to the roll of the wrist only to cause the club head to rotate around this wrist point. And okay. first you could try 90 and just throw it like you're, like you're fishing. Yep. Okay. Yep. So let it drop and then see if you can get it to pop pretty good. Okay. So you're starting to get it there. You're getting some you outward. Like a C, C plus there. You're getting some outward force <laughs> going. Yeah. Pretty good, good wrist pop. Okay. So throw it at the camera more instead of down. Okay. Good. Okay. I gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm almost feeling like I'm going more like kind of I feel like I'm going kind of up and back. I would agree. That's the that's probably the first direction that the throw would start in. And yeah. then as, as it goes around, it feels like it ends up more down. Yeah, you're getting yeah. it now. So it's almost like, yeah. So if I was back here and I was like, which is always, I used to mess me up when I used to track it. Yeah. I get a guy like Justin Thomas or Rory mm -hmm. and draw a circle around the club head. Yeah. And I used to think in my mind that the club head was coming down and in sure, this way. Sure, sure. But and it would so, go up and back. Well, sure. And so the, they're actually it's starting to apply yeah. that action to the wrist. And that's what a lot of people aren't seeing on the camera with these guys, because it's, remember, I, when I was uh, demonstrating it, I was showing it to you and you're doing it now, you're yeah. showing it in isolation. Yeah, exactly. And so we're isolating a movement, it starts looking kind of dicey until you blend it in with the rest of the motion, which would include pivoting, turning. Yeah, And exactly. we'll, we'll, we'll put that together in a second. Okay, and so when I'm going up, if we were to go micro, yeah. right? Yeah. Of what I'm feeling. Yeah. I'm feeling the lead wrist will just let like we say unhinging. Yeah. If you will, right? Yeah. Down in that's here. It. And that's really the main component. That, that's the first 90 degrees, sure. Yeah. That's the first 90 degrees. That goes with if you if you also had your now if you had your right arm on it too. Yep. The pair of arms. So now at this wrist, you'd feel what you said is unhinging. Yep. And, and this, the major thing will be the elbow extending. Yeah, right. Right. Right, exactly. And so now it feels like it's a two-handed fishing cast in the rivers over there, yes. you might say. And just keep in mind that at 90 degrees, we're just not done yet. So we're not going to go 90 degrees and quit. Yeah, Because yeah, then yeah. your speed, the, uh, uh, the, the highest end of your speed will be a little too soon. Yeah. And you'll still have an open club face. So we're not, yeah, we're not going to quit at 90. Yep. We're going to go a full semicircle with that action, Got which it. is now we're going to have to start involving the forearm and the upper arm turning. Yeah. To, and that's the only way that we'll be able to continue advancing. So the ball will, will be out and popping, but we're, we're still in the process of now, now starting to turn it. Yeah, exactly. It. So yeah. if I'm here and I'm, I'm almost getting the, the head yeah. of the close you can to... almost reach if you get the full range of motion yeah, you can okay. almost reach it now yeah. if you were to ice do this isolation yeah and just for fun you just threw a ball in front of it and you had like a seven or an eight iron you threw a ball in front of it the shot you should hit if you're doing it right if you're just isolating would be a super fat super hook shot okay got it yeah and so that's how you'd know when you were doing it right yeah. and then all you need to do is say well hey now i need to start moving my body into it so i just keep moving that release point forward back in front of the ball like it belongs and i think that's such a good point when someone watches this and some of the drills we do to exaggerate a piece in isolation yeah, yeah. it can look different than normal yeah. that's what we're trying to do yeah right 
And now if I were to feel these same things, but now yeah. I add my normal shift turn pivot rotation, yes. Yes. it's gonna look pretty darn normal. It will look completely normal and no one will have ever suspected that you were doing that <laughs> action. That. They'll say, wow, you hold the lag so well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if I were to feel that same thing, but I add my turn, yeah. now that circle, that feel yeah. goes from back here to in front. Yeah. Not only that, but you might find for some people, throwing back here and getting the, the whoosh and the potentially the divot way back here, it might encourage them to do Feels more good. of what you just did, yeah. which is get this going harder. Yeah, exactly. Because we know that most people just don't get that much of it. They Motivate do, them they either They're that. either back or they just kind of hit the ball in front of their belly button instead of hitting the ball more off their side as they're turning through the, the target. And so if we were to do that, let me just grab my driver back yeah. here. If we were to do that, let's say, I'm sure in terms of like phases of learning, yeah. you would want someone to be able to do the first motion first mm -hmm. and then gradually learn how to get from 90 to 180. Yeah. And then once you can kind of feel the 180, you start to feel the pivot. Yeah. And then I'm trying to basically feel the same pieces when I hit a ball. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so if I were to transfer this sort of drill for me right now, having just done mm -hmm. this for two minutes, yes. into hitting a ball, yes. my sensations from here is really the unhinging, widening the arc yes. um, earlier yes. as I'm coming down, the club head getting kind of lower to the ground. Yes. As I, and I'm already doing the pivot stuff, yeah. so I'm not gonna feel that as much. Right. For me, it's, it's more that. Right. Yeah. And so I'm gonna hit a couple, yeah. right? So let's hit one or two. I think we're going out just maybe to the right of that 200. Yeah. So I'm going to hit one or two. I don't, you know, again, just to kind of start the process and feels from the top. Yeah. And again, for me, I get that sensation of Justin Thomas in my mind from the top where the club head's here and it's not going straight down and in towards right. the ball. It's going back behind me yes. and back towards the camera uh -huh. as he's pivoting. And those guys that aren't the biggest guys in the world hit it a mile. Uh -huh. That club head always traces that same back back behind him this way and back towards the camera, yeah. right? Which I can't do if I'm pulling this down like that. That's true. So let's go ahead and hit one with it. And I'm gonna feel those wrist motions mm -hmm. from the top here. Mm -hmm. it feels like a widening uh, kind of early mm -hmm. motion for me. Yeah, and that, Steve- that's a, that's a keeper. So for me, what I noticed from there in terms of ball flight pattern mm -hmm. is, is what you mentioned was gonna happen before, which is higher launch, mm -hmm. more angle of attack. Like I can tell by that going higher. Mm. I hit it a little high on the face, but I can tell by that going yeah. higher. Higher than your usual. Higher than my usual, which is mm -hmm. me getting the club head working more up, yeah. uh, more dynamic loft, which mm -hmm. given uh, relative to a given speed mm -hmm. is what everyone should be doing to hit it farther with mm -hmm. less effort, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna do that it's one more time. Thing to have. Yeah, more distance with less effort is good. I go one more time to the top. I'm kind of feeling the same sort of motions there mm -hmm, earlier. Mm -hmm. Not feeling the body because I think I'm gonna already do that. Let's go ahead and do one more. Yeah, that feels really good for me, Steve. And it feels athletic. It's out there. And Ooh. you know, that throw out motion, I think that's good. I think that's a good um, sort of general recap of what the motion is, mm -hmm. a good starting point for someone to learn. Mm -hmm. But guys, if you like this, we're gonna link another video up here above that's gonna tell you more about this. And we're gonna put a link to Steve's channel down below. This was just a little bit of brief of what Steve does. He's got a lot of driver videos, a lot of speed videos that are really good. And again, this is just a little piece of that and we'll talk more in some of the other ones. So Steve, thanks for coming out, man. Oh, Appreciate you're welcome. You. Thanks that for having fun. me. Thanks.